Hello everybody and welcome back. Today we're going to continue with our Flat Asteroids game. Just a reminder that if you want to download any of the source code, it's available on GitHub on this location. I'm, all, I'm also going to keep a link going in the description. So if you ever want to download that, or take a look at the code, or maybe use the code as well, it's perfectly fine. Back in our project, so here we are in the game, the main Game 1 class. Last time we ended up creating the circles we're going to use for our collision detection, and we have them being drawn here so we can take a look at them. But now let's go ahead and actually talk about circle collision detection. We're basically going to make kind of a mini or maybe even a micro physics engine for our game. For the most part, I think we're going to be using circles, but if the gameplay requires it, we may go a little bit more in depth with that and maybe try some polygon collision detection as well. I'm going to draw a few circles here. As far as our collision detection, it's concerned with the circles that exist in the game. What we need to be able to do now is test whether any of these circles are overlapping. For example, here we have two circles that are overlapping. We need to figure out if this overlap has occurred, and then figure out, okay, now how do we stop this overlap from continuing? How do we resolve this overlap? And basically, the way you do that with circles, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here, is we determine how far apart they are. Okay, what's the distance between the center point of this circle and the center point of the other circle? So I'm going to call this circle A and circle B. We'll call this circle C and circle D. Now these two are obviously not intersecting according to our picture. So the way we determine if circles are intersecting is we first determine the distance between the, their centers. The distance formula between two points looks like this. We find the difference in the x position, and then we find the distance along the y distance. And so we'll end up with two variables. I'm going to call the first one dx, which is the distance between the x's. So we're going to have, uh, we'll just do cx minus bx. Then we need to find the distance between the y's. Uh, so that will be then the cy and the by. Once we have the dx and dy, we square the dx and dy. So dx times dx, the dy times the dy, and then we add them together. And this will actually give us the squared distance between them. So once we have the squared distance between them, we then just take the square root of the whole thing, and that will give us the distance. So the first thing we're going to do is let's just go ahead and code this formula into our game library, the flat library. Inside the utility, I want to have a function that will give us the distance between two points. So this is going to return a floating point value, which is the distance. I'm just going to call this distance. And we're going to pass in two vectors that will represent the points we want to test. So we'll have A and B. Let's calculate the distance between the x's first. So we'll do BX and then AX. And do the same thing for the Y. Uh, then we're going to square each value and add them together. And then we need to take the square root of the whole thing. And let's return that as our final. Okay, so there is our final distance formula. So that will give us the distance between any two points defined by vectors. Back in our drawing program, the, now the next thing we need to do is determine how close is an intersection. And that can be determined by adding the radius of one to the radius of the other. When you add the radius together from each one, it's going to tell you how close we need to be before there is an, over, before there is an overlap and we have uh, intersection. So we're just going to take the radius, let's call this the uh, radius of C, I'm going to CR, and this will be the radius of B, I'm going to call this BR. We're going to add that together, and I'm just going to call this, I'm just going to call the radius R. That's just going to be the two radii added together. So we're going to have BR uh, plus CR. And then all we have to do is compare these two values. So if the actual distance is less than this radius value here, or the two radii added together, then we have intersection. So intersection is true. So let's make a function that'll first compute the distance between the, the centers, compute the, the radius, the radii added together, and then we'll compare the distances. Back in our code, now inside the physics namespace, I'm going to add a new static class, and this class is going to be responsible for doing all kinds of collision detection. Right now, it's just going to handle circles. That's going to be the only one in there initially. But eventually, I'm going to add uh, polygon, axis aligned boxes will be handled inside this static class. I'm going to call this collision. We're going to make this a static class. I'm going to bring in the monogame namespace. And the first function I'm going to make is just going to test whether two circles intersect. So I'm going to call this intersect circles. 
we're going to pass in two circles. And so for basic intersection, when all you want to determine is, are they overlapping? All we have to do is now put this information in. So the first thing we do is compute the distance. So we'll use the utility class to get the distance formula. We're gonna pass in the circle center from A and then the circle center from B. Now let's add the radii of the two circles together is gonna to be A radius plus B radius. And now we're just gonna compare that information. If the distance is greater than or equal to those uh, two radii added together, let's return false. And then otherwise we're gonna return true. So, and let's actually make sure we return this true value. Okay, so this is basic circle intersection. So back in our game class, we have this list of entities and we want to determine if any entity is overlapping with any other entity. Scroll down here to the update function. We're already updating every entity. So we're gonna go ahead and move the entities. And then after we move the entities, we need to test for overlap. So we just need to loop through every entity and compare it to every other entity. And so initially the way that's gonna look is we're gonna have two loops. So the first loop will loop through all the entities. Okay, and then the second loop, we're gonna loop through all the entities again. I have two different variables looping through each of the entities. The first one is I is looping through all the entities and then down here J is looping through all the entities. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the first entity. I'm gonna call that A. And then we're gonna get the next entity we want to compare and we'll call that B. So now we have two entities that we can actually compare. With this nested for loop, we're actually gonna start comparing entities that are the same. So the first thing we're gonna do here is just determine if I is equal to J, we're going to continue because we don't wanna compare entities that are the same. And the other thing as you can tell here is we're actually gonna end up testing entities more than once. We'll talk about how to resolve that a little bit later, but for now, let's go ahead and just use this basic nested for loop uh, to get the idea of looping through each entity and comparing it to every other entity. So now we have the two ent different entities. Now let's actually do the collision detection. We'll call in the collision Oh, we don't have access to the collisions class yet because I'm probably not bringing in the namespace. So I'm probably not, because I'm probably not bringing in the physics and yep, I don't see it there right now. So let's bring in the flat physics namespace and now down here we should have access to the collision class. There we are, so collision, we're going to intersect circles and we need to set up these circles. All right, so up here I'm going to make the first circle. I'm going to call this circle A or CA will just be a new circle. We're gonna get the entity's position for the center. And it looks like we don't have access to that. So let's go back into the entity and let's create a property that will give us access to the position. And we're also gonna need the radius. So let's make a property that will give us access to the radius as well. Okay, so we should be able to get the information to create circles for the collision detection. Back in our game class, let's get the position and we're gonna use that for the center of the circle and then we'll get the radius as well. So we have the first entity and the first circle. Now we have the second entity here, we need to get the second circle, and we're gonna call this circle B, and that'll be the B position and the B radius. Now we should be able to put these circles into this intersect function, so circle A and circle B, and let us know if they're actually intersecting. For right now, the only thing I'm gonna do is make a visual indicator to tell us if these are actually intersecting. So right now, the circles of our entities, I believe we made them draw to a white color. And so I'm gonna actually make another variable. This is gonna be a color and I'm gonna call this circle color. And this is just gonna be the color of the circle so we can change that to indicate if there has been a collision or not. So I have the circle color is that and Instead of protected, I'm gonna make this public so we can modify it really easily. And I'm just gonna change the naming convention here. For my personal naming convention, every time I make a public field like this, I make it a um, capital letter. So now we should be able to change that circle color inside our game class. If we do find that there is intersection in the circles or there is overlap, I want to change the color of the circles. So the A entity circle color, we're gonna change that to red. Okay, and then the, do the same thing for the B circle color. Since we're setting this to red here, we need to actually reset the circle color value before we come into this loop every time. Otherwise, once they intersect, it'll just stay red forever. So let's go into the update function here. We're gonna go to that definition and we're just going to set the circle color to white. That'll reset the circle intersection color 
and then we can go back into our collision loop and get the red color if they intersect. So let's run that and let's just see if we can see intersection happening and see if our code is working correctly. So we'll just aim at this asteroid here. And that looks like it's working just right. I am seeing it get kind of close here, so it's right there. And let's aim for this one. There we go, and you can see it's intersecting right there. Okay, that looks just right, looks perfect. And I actually want to add a few more asteroids just to make it a little bit more interesting. So we're doing five right now. Let's make it 15. Okay, and we should be able to see intersections as the, there we go. So as they go along, you can see when they intersect, they, the circles turn red and then they turn back to white when they're done intersecting. That looks like it's working really well. The last thing I want to do is go ahead and optimize the circle intersection routine just a little bit. And it's a very simple optimization. We can actually optimize this circle intersection routine by getting rid of the square root. Inside our distance function, let's go to that definition. We're actually doing this square root right here. And instead of doing this, we can actually compare the squared distance between the circles. So back here, this distance here, we can actually leave this as a square distance. So instead of taking this square root here, we would just not take the square root. We would call this the distance squared. Now we can just compare the distance squared to the squared radii of the circles. And that'll completely get rid of this square root value altogether because multiplication in general is faster than doing a square root. All right, so inside our utility class, I want to make another function. And this, this one will be called distance squared. And we're gonna pass in two vectors just like we did before. And all of this is gonna be the same mostly, so I'm just going to copy it over. The only difference is we're just not going to take this square root. So we'll end up with the square distance between two points. Back inside our collision, instead of calling distance, we're going to call distance squared. And then we need to square this amount here. So I'm going to rename this to now the square distance squared. And we'll change this one here as well, so the distance squared. And then I need to make a radius squared, and that'll be r2 times r2. And so let's call that radius squared. And let's run that and just make sure it works exactly as the previous version did. And so far I see some collisions that look like they're exactly the same. That looks good. And let's add a few more asteroids. So inside our game, instead of 15, let's make it 30. Okay, there we go. And it looks like it's working just right. I'm seeing all the collisions look appropriate. When the circle is out of collision, they're turning back to white. So that'll be it for basic circle collision detection. That looks really good. It's uh, We're moving on to the point where we can now start resolving the collisions. Um, we're gonna make the for loops, our nested for loop, a little bit more efficient. Uh, for now, that looks really good. Everything seems like it's working uh, just right.